What's up, Cal gang? All right, we got a cool problem. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I hate pulleys. I don't know why, I don't like pulley problems, but actually this one's all right. You know what, and I, I'm gonna solve it for you guys, and we're gonna figure it out together. So, let's go ahead and uh, look into it. So what is it asking? So it wants us to find the coefficient of kinetic friction between block A and the tabletop. Okay, how are we gonna go ahead and do that? Actually, okay, first of all, there's a couple other important information we need. Uh, it says that, um, I put the Newtons on there. It says that when you push it down, it goes down with a constant accelerate, or it goes down with a constant speed. Constant speed means no acceleration, right? We learned that already. So if you have a constant speed, no acceleration, well, let's go ahead and see what it does. So we know that the sum of our forces is equal to mass times acceleration. But we just said that acceleration is equal to zero. So boom, we can say this is zero. So that means that the sum of our forces is gonna equal zero. So that's great, let's do it. So an easy way to do this is to find, let's see, what's the force of block B? Now what's the tension force? Um, I'm gonna be honest, once you understand this part, you don't have to do it, but I'm gonna show it. So the sum of our forces is equal to force of gravity. Okay, let's draw a quick, quick body diagram. Force of gravity, force of tension. They're gonna be equal to each other. That's all you need, okay. So it's gonna be force of gravity minus force of tension. It's gonna be equal to zero, right? Okay, so that's, you can say force of gravity is equal to force of tension. We know that the force of gravity on this is 25 newtons because it's 25 newtons. So the force of friction, or tension, I don't know why I said friction there, is equal to 25 newtons. Okay, great. Let's look at our second block now. Now that we have the tension, so the tension here is 25 newtons, which means the tension here is 25 newtons, but it's, um, it's accelerating. It's not accelerating, so let's look at this. So this body diagram on A would look like a, uh, it would be force of tension, which is 25 newtons, and then force of friction. And once again, this block isn't accelerating either, it's just going at a constant speed. So same thing as this, acceleration zero, the sum of the forces is gonna equal zero. That means that force of tension has to equal force of friction. So you can say force of friction is equal to 25 newtons. Okay, great, but it's asking for the coefficient of friction. So we need a formula for this. So the co so friction, Force of friction is equal to the coefficient of friction times um, force normal. Okay, so we're looking for this. That means we need to find force normal. So let's, um, we, I didn't draw the rest of this force body diagram. I just drew the important stuff. But another thing we have is force of gravity, which is equal to 45 newtons, right? Because that's its weight. And because it's on a level surface, the force normal is also gonna be equal to 45 newtons because it's, you know, if we're looking, you could do the same thing, right? It's not accelerating. It's flat. It's not moving at all. So the sum of the forces, which means force of gravity downward and force of Newton, or force of normal up, is going to be the same. 45 Newtons, 45 Newtons. Great. Okay, let's go over here. So we have that the coefficient of friction times 45 Newtons is equal to 25 Newtons. Okay, great. So then uh, all you have to do is divide, you know, 25 by 45, and you're going to get a number. That looks like zero point five five six. Great, and uh, that's a that's a realistic answer. When you, usually when you get a coefficient of friction, it's going to be like less than one. The strong, if it's like a low friction, it's going to be like towards point two. If it's like a high friction, it's going to be like that number. So that's high friction, and we know that that's right. Okay, great. Uh, that's an important number. We're going to need that. Let's go ahead and start over. No, I'm just joking. Let's do part two. Uh, I'm going to keep this too, because it's probably important. Okay, so now we put a cat on top of block A. And how much does the cat weigh? 45 newtons? Okay, so we got... Okay, this is going to be... Yes, that's a cat. And this is 45 newtons. I almost just spelled out 45. Let's get it right. Okay. Let's solve this part. 45 newtons on top of that. That means that the sum of those is 90 newtons. So we can go ahead and affect our, or change our diagram here. You know it's gonna be 90 newtons this time. 90, 90. Uh, we know our tension force is still 25, and it's asking what's the acceleration. Okay, let's go ahead and write out something that we know. So the sum of our forces is equal to mass times acceleration. We don't know that the acceleration is zero this time. In fact, it isn't zero because it's asking us to find it. Okay, so the sum of our forces, we're looking at, let's look at this guy here. So 
So it's going to be force of tension minus force of friction is equal to mass times acceleration. All right, good, good. OK, so force of tension, we figured that out earlier. It's going to be the same. It's going to be 25 newtons. 25 minus uh, the coefficient of friction is going to be the same. Um, and then force normal, which is going to be a different number this time, is equal to mass acceleration. OK, so 25 minus, uh, so the coefficient is 0 0.556. The force normal, once again, we did the same thing earlier. Forcing, because it's not moving up or down, the gravity is 90 newtons. That means that the force normal is 90 newtons because it's pointing, you know, it's not on an angle at all. So this is 90. And then the mass is going to be equal to the sum of this entire unit because we're looking at the whole thing's acceleration. So we have 90 newtons here and the 25 newtons here. So that's going to be 115 newtons. But you might make a mistake here and say that this is your mass. But this isn't mass. This is force. Mass, because we're on Earth, because you know the force is equal to mass times acceleration. The acceleration here is going to be 9.81 because we're on Earth. It's gravity. So if you want to find out what mass is, you have to divide by one, the 115 by 9.81 to find mass. All right, so let's plug that in. 115 divided by 9.81, acceleration. Okay, perfect. All we have now is numbers. So uh, I'm not going to go ahead and plug this all into you guys. I'm just going to make sure I did it right. Um, so uh, yeah, that looks all right to me. Okay, and then uh, you know how to solve this from here, right? Let's just plug it. Just solve. Just like put it in your calculator. This is equal to 2.14 meters a second squared and wait a second where is it accelerating you know it's given a constant push and it's asking where is it accelerating that's because um, I don't know how to answer that hold on let me think about this oh okay of course I actually lied to you guys that's not the right answer <laughs> if you solve this correctly you're gonna get actually negative right uh, what is it two point four meters a second squared. Now that doesn't mean that it's accelerating upward, right? It would be crazy if like this system just started moving to the left, like that'd be funny. It's not doing that. It's actually just, because it's starting with an initial velocity, it's slowing down basically. It starts like fast and then it slows down like that. So uh, how do we know this? Um, I know it's because I do, but uh, basically it comes from this part here. Uh, we're looking because we're doing tension minus friction. That means that we're like looking in this direction, right? We're seeing what it's going in this direction. And because we have a negative acceleration in this direction, that means it's slowing down in this direction. So the acceleration is this like pointed up, I guess. Up or left, depending on what block you're looking at. So yeah, that's how you solve these kind of problems. Um, I know I said I don't like poly problems, but this one's kind of fun. So yeah, good luck on your physics homework, guys. See you next time.